Hello everyone, in this tutorial I will show you how to use the basic principles of animation in Blender. First of all, I will show you the basic instruments of Blender. So before we actually start uh, animating our objects, we need to uh, set up some settings in Blender to make it easier to select objects and remove them or move them in a certain direction. So as you can see in Blender, by default you have to select objects with right click of the mouse button. But in order to set it up uh, so that you normally click with left uh, mouse button, like in any other software, you have to go go to the settings and then set up presets to Maya and the preferences to Maya as well. This will make uh, your preferences set it up as in Maya software. So let's remove everything. You can do that with Ctrl A and delete or selecting everything and deleting it. Next we'll add a UV sphere which is just a normal sphere. Uh, if you select objects you will uh, see three arrows. Those arrows specify the direction to which you can move your objects and those are the axis of the objects as well. So basically uh, each object, whenever you rotate it, has its own uh, local space. So if we try to move using those axes, we will see that it moves along those uh, arrows. So now we have to locate our object up because it's going to be a bouncing ball and set up a key. Now before we set up a key, we have to understand uh, what's the timing. So I play back and approximately visualize it in my head. And as I can see, it's around 60 frames, the duration of the shot. So basically my bouncing ball will finish its bouncing till the end of the 60s frame. Next, I put the markers which signifies uh, a timing for ball to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Using markers is a nice way to time it out in real time. So after that, when we press insert a keyframe on the zero frame or on the first frame, uh, the software will ask us which um, attributes would you like to keyframe. Now there is a lot of attributes and you might get confused to which one you should uh, add a keyframe. And if you don't want to add a keyframe to each one separately, you have to signify that to the software. So in order in order to signify that to the blender, you have to go bottom of the screen and specify location, rotation and scale. Whenever we press insert key or whenever we move an object, we will add a keyframe to those attributes. Right now, as you can see, there is no green line, so there is no keyframe. So let's press S. Now we go to the next uh, timing spot and move our objects to the down position as well as swashing it. Next, I go through each of the changes uh, and then setting the position the way I need it. Uh, if you want to reset the object scale, you have to go to the parameters, which you can find by clicking N on the keyboard and finding the scale parameter uh, while your object is selected. Uh, you can set up all of the scale attributes to one. This will be equal to its original state. Now you might think, how do I copy the keyframe? Uh, in Blender, in order to copy a keyframe, you can't just do it in a timeline. You have to open another window with a dope sheet, which has all your keyframes that you can move and also copy, paste, delete, duplicate, etc. So in that dope sheet, you have to select the keyframe that you want to uh, copy. So by selecting it, it will become yellow. Select it from the top so that the row of the diamonds will be yellow. And then you can copy by pressing Ctrl C on the keyboard and then Ctrl V on the uh, keyboard to paste it in the position where you need it. You can also move it and substitute it with another keyframe by just dragging it over the uh, previous keyframe. Here is where uh, you duplicate all the keyframes that you need and change it um, the way you want. After you've done all of your uh, positions and timing, you can go to Graph Editor and see how those in-betweens are made by the Blender. So if you go to the Graph Editor, you will see that those changes are made in an ease-in and ease-out fashion. So the transition between the keyframes is uh, smooth and not, not very realistic. So we have to add additional uh, changes, additional in-betweens that will refine the idea that we are trying to achieve. So in my case, uh, between post A and post B, there's certainly a key needed that will demonstrate the stretchness of the object. Uh, so there is a normal pose, stretch pose, and then the squash pose. That will add a, a additional refinement and make my animation look much nicer. Then I add another in-between because I feel like there is not so much weight to the object. So I go to the in-between and then I uh, move my object a little bit closer to the post A. This makes my spacing not so even and make it almost like the object stays in a post, post A for a while before, before going down into post B. This makes it look like it weights a lot. So I do the same thing for the other in-betweens uh, by setting up a stretch pose as well as the pose in between that. Here is where you apply your uh, principles of animation that you learned 
from stop motion animation or any other traditional technique of animation. You can always go to the dope sheet and move your keyframe the way you think they should be if you feel like uh, the timing is wrong or the spacing is a little bit uh, different. In order to render our scene, we have to add a camera from which we can record our animation. Uh, this camera will look at our object at a specific angle which we specify and that will demonstrate our final result. Now, after I create a camera, I need to move my camera to the place where my view is. In order to do that, I click on the view, align view, and align active camera to the view. Now that makes it uh, aligned, but there's still a little adjustment to the camera that is needed. So I go to the uh, parameters and make it lock to the view. And now I can move and rotate uh, my camera the way I do this with normal view and then adjust it to the position I want. Now when you lock your camera, uh, you are basically moving your camera. If you turn off the lock, you can um, zoom in, zoom out, uh, but it will not zoom in and zoom out your camera, rather the view. As you can see, my camera uh, is animated and that's because the uh, auto key was turned on. So the each time I move the camera, the keyframe is added to the camera and uh, that's why we have an animation. So in order to remove those keyframes, we need to select the camera, which you can do by either clicking on the border of the view or clicking in outliner camera, where actually you can select any objects in your scene and then going to the dope sheet and selecting only those keyframes which are related to the camera as you can see uh, on the left following the row uh, that says the camera otherwise you can also click on the arrow and this will show only those keyframes uh, for the selected objects so if we select the camera it will only show the keyframes of the camera now when we removed the camera animation uh, we can play it back and see our animation from the camera Let's say uh, we need to zoom out in our scene. Let's say we have it in storyboard and so we want to implement it in our uh, project. So in order to do that, just like with the ball, we need to add a first frame and then add another frame, which in our case will be the last frame, and just zoom out our camera. And don't forget to turn on lock camera to view uh, so that your camera follows the adjustments you make to the view. After you did that, go to the graph edit, play back your animation. You will see that the camera moves out uh, very slowly and then it gradually gains speed and then it slows in to the last keyframe. So this is done because um, software treats those two keyframes uh, using the auto tangent mode which basically creates a smooth transition between uh, two keyframes um, but we need a linear transition which makes uh, which makes no acceleration or deceleration in animation but just a linear zoom out so in order to do that we need to select our keyframes in a graph editor and make them linear so if we select right click it and choose vector this will make them uh, linear now when we are done with our camera animation and our animation and our primary animation, we can start going into rendering. If I try rendering this uh, image right now, you will see that it is completely black. And that's because we don't have any physical lights in the scene. So let's add sun. As you can see, it lights up the object, and if you rotate it around, it will also change the angle of that, that light. I still don't like the black light under objects, uh, so I need to change that in the world properties under the ambient color, where I can specify that black color and make a change. And I can choose any kind of color which I want. This will be applied to the whole scene. Now, I can also specify the background color or the background sky. Next, you go to the render properties and you switch back to material so that the processor is not used so much. You can set up the quality to 100 and go to the output settings change it to AV JPEG this is the format that we're gonna render into if you just leave it as PNG you'll render each frame as a separate PNG file this will have in our case if we have 60 frames we'll have 60 images in the folder that you are rendering to if you don't plan to post produce it using After Effects or Premiere, you can just render it as, as a video format. So I will specify the place to render my animation into and specify the name. Then click Accept. Now we just click Animation button and it will render our animation into the image editor, which uh, will be visible in our 3D view. Now as you can see, the program is rendering each frame into a video file and compiling it together. Let it render 
to the final um, frame and it will stop rendering and you can change your view back to 3D view from image editor. Uh, if you go to the same folder where you rendered your animation, you can open the animation and you will see um, your final results. I hope you learned uh, something out of this tutorial and feel free to comment and ask questions below. Thanks for watching.